So Don, you're a week into this experiment. How do you think it's going overall? Uh, pretty good, honestly. Yeah, I think other than the, other than the little glitch early with the length of time in between test results, uh, I think it's been pretty good. Obviously, there's still like we got to keep working on you know better habits of just little stuff that you do naturally in the dugout and things like that. But in general, I think the, you know, the guys working on the schedule have done a nice job of, you know, guys coming in at different times for testing. We have different, you know, workouts where guys aren't here all day long. Uh, I think they're getting in and getting their work done. We've had a plan for try to stay away from um, soft tissue stuff. We've, we've been pretty successful so far, knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, okay, so far, you know, and I think even our even our little game yesterday, we learned a lot about that. Things we got to get better at. Um, I think they'll get cleaner as you know those things we kind of play some more. What are a couple of the things you're talking about there? You learn you learn things. Well, it's just like getting the pitchers out there with men on base and having to deal with that. You know, when you're throwing live BPs in Jupiter or somewhere. Uh, you know, a, a you know a baseball place. It's not the same uh, when you get guys in there that are getting ready and they know it. Like when you start getting Corey and Jonathan and these guys bearing down on you because they need to get ready too. It's not like the regular live BP where you're just throwing. These are at bats, trying to put an umpire back there where it looks real, feels real. Um, you find out where you're at that you need to like not only get the ball over, but you better get the ball to certain spots, right? So it just puts, it kind of lets you know where you're at right now. Uh, it's been three and a half months. So no matter how you, how much work you've done or how much you've, you know, done to be ready for this, which our guys have been pretty good at, still it's been three and a half months since you've, you know, seen a hitter in the box, had to deal with first and second situation. Uh, all those little things that I think will become more second nature as we go. From the guys and what are you anticipating as you kind of ramp this up in the final two weeks before you get going for real i'd say in the first week we found out that the guys did some work when they were gone and that i think that made us all feel pretty good that these guys kept up with their work nobody came back you know out of shape or you know like just a mess didn't do anything the whole time they were gone seeing our guys did their work uh and that you know we're you know, finding different ways to try to get these guys up to speed. Uh, so I think in the first week we've learned where we're at, you know, kind of physically, uh, where we need to kind of continue on, um, where we need to get to in these last couple of weeks. Will that mean just more game simulation, more, um, you know, to get the guys for a game? Because that's kind of where you were when it stopped in mid-March. You were literally two weeks before opening day. Yeah, we're, we're more in the, it's going to get more like a game as we get moving on, right? So it's semi game yesterday, putting guys out there, still not running, you know, letting guys burn, let it go yet uh, on their legs. We're not trying to steal. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot of stuff. We don't have a full, you know, full team out there. Um, but it, it's going to get more and more looking like a game as we keep moving. All right, we turn to Jordan. Yeah, hey, Donnie, uh, you mentioned yesterday how much you were hoping to get some exhibition games at the tail end. You guys are going to be playing two games at the Braves. Just can you talk in the value of getting a few actual games in against teams that are in different uniform and being able to get some of that experience in before everything picks up on the 24th? Yeah, I think all the more games you can play in this situation, the better. And playing yourself is okay. You know, you're going to get something out of it, but obviously – playing as a group against somebody else is really what you're trying to get to. So I think the fact that we're able to get a couple games is, is good for us. It's good for them probably too. Uh, but, you know, again, I think it, it just gets you closer to, to where you're at, where you went, where you need to get to. All right, Craig Mish. Hey, Donnie, um, a couple of questions for you. Uh, first one is logistically speaking, 
is the would the plan maybe you don't have it but would the plan simply be to fly to atlanta and then to fly on um to philadelphia or is there anything different potentially that you guys may choose and is there any uh, update on any of the players who uh, have yet to uh, be with you guys yet at this point thank you um yeah i think yeah we would definitely i think the plan would be to fly um, play a couple games and fly right on the into Philly. So it wouldn't be any other different arrangements than if you were on a you know, two game trip uh, in Atlanta, other than we'd probably fly uh, day of the first one, you know, in an exhibition game like that, where it's only, you know, an hour flight or hour 15 or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I mean, with the guys that aren't with us yet, obviously we continue into the, the protocol and at different stages with that. Um, obviously we can't talk too much about it other than, you know, going through the protocol of that and, uh, you know, guys are at different stages of it. All right. We turn to Fox Sports Florida. Jess. Hey, Donnie, uh, just talking to Harold Ramirez, he didn't go too in depth, but he did say that there are a couple of adjustments that he's making to his swing. Um, just curious if you've noticed anything in particular about the at-bats that you've seen from Harold yet, or if there's anything that has stood out to you about maybe some of the adjustments that he's trying to make. No, I've seen him right away. Um, and they, they're, they're good ones. Uh, Harold's narrowed up, straightened up um, as far as his legs. And just to, you know, Harold was really wide, really extreme, cut off at, you know, beginning of the year last year, he slowly worked, you know, guys let you know what works and what doesn't and what won't work, what will not work over time. Uh, so he was, he had some extremes going on last year. He, it was changing slowly through the course of the year. I think the adjustments that he's continued to make are good ones for him getting him more straight, allows him to hit more pitches, see the ball better. Um, so I think he's looked really good. You know, the, he was one of the guys that was down here hitting a lot of live during the guys' live BPs. And I guess he was the MVP of the hitters uh, during that period. So he's been swinging the bat pretty good. So he was on some radars uh, of looking good before this thing even got started. All right, Max from the Sun Sentinel. Yeah, we, we were just talking to Sterling, and he was sort of opening up about um, how uh, his role in speaking up on uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Um, it seems like the organization has been from sort of the top down, been very forthcoming and progressive with it. Um, I'm wondering how you've seen your role um, and how you continue to see your role in helping a lot of players to speak out. I think, in, you know, from honestly, in my role, I feel like is listen. And I think that's individually, right? Uh, you know, a lot of reading during this and uh, different guys, comments and statements and really leaders in, in my home, own hometown. Uh, and really kind of, you know, just kind of surprised by some of it, right? By the still what some of their stories, right? So more than anything, pay attention. Um, and then, you know, obviously we always got to be open to that communication and, and try to create situation where guys are comfortable um I've, I've said it many times i think the the locker room is probably one of the best places in the world because you play good you it, there is more equality there than anywhere right in pro sports because you play well you're going to play right they're not they're not it just doesn't feel that way in the locker room at all it never has so i think the locker room is a good place for like you know, in general, where you want it to get to, because I think guys are comfortable for the most part. I'm sure there's some, in reading some stories, there's still things that guys, you know, felt while they were going through the minor leagues or even in the major leagues at different times. So I'm trying to do a lot of listening and making sure I'm open-minded to, to hearing what guys have to say. All right, we go Steve Wine. John, do you still think uh, three weeks is about the right amount of time for this? Yeah, I think in the kind of shape that guys have came back, three weeks is good. Um, you know, when you start talking about spring training, I've always felt like hitters could get ready in three weeks. If you ask them and you let them know that in three weeks we're going to be starting, mm -hmm. they're going to start counting, 
guys turn it on right away. Um, the thing that's different about now in like a regular spring training, guys wouldn't walk into camp being ready to throw five innings. Like, you know, Sandy walks in ready to throw five innings. Caleb walks in ready to throw five innings. Uh, so your starters wouldn't have been building up the way they've been building up. Um, and so they need time to build up, and that's that extra three weeks, right? So that in, in camp is really six weeks for pitchers. Players could do it in three and do it pretty easily in three. All right, we go to Scott. Uh, hi, John. During the downtime, I had a chance to watch a lot of Korea baseball organization games. Did you have a chance to look at any of those games so you, you can get an idea of what uh, your games will look like when the time comes? Uh, I did not watch any length of them. I seen it like a half inning here or a half inning there. Uh, noticed, you know, some differences. Obviously, nobody in the stands, but things they were doing. Um, you had a pretty good idea what it's going to look like. I think the one, again, I think what goes back to what is good for us is that it's 60 games. And it's, just, and it's everybody's in it, right? So I think you get the energy from knowing that you're in a playoff hunt uh, in a pennant race. So there's where you got to get your energy from. You're just not going to get it from people in the stands. That part is going to be not going to be that there. So, you know, I think the, the difference for me, um, I've seen a little bit of the well, with the social distancing, things like that, that you figured they're building up for that anyway. But. Well, I did see the mask and things like that, but also yeah. seeing guys look like they were high-fiving and dug out and things like that too, which is hard not to do, right? Um, so I did see, you know, again, just little bits and pieces of it. And, you know, you've seen some guys with masks, some guys not. Um, so you've seen that difference. Um, but, I mean, that's just going to be there for us this year. But I think the exciting part is going to be a pennant race. Thank you. All right, we go to Paul from the Treasure Coast newspaper. Hi, Don. I also wanted to ask you about Sterling Sharp, but a little different angle. Typically, you have uh, one, maybe two Rule 5 guys in camp every year. But because of the different roster rules this year and, and the shorter season and the number of days that he has to stay in the roster, how much of it, how much different is the decision? How much easier it is, is it to to keep him, you know, at various points through the season? No, no question. The short season helps you with a guy like that. And there's probably some teams out there, if they knew it was going to be like this, they would have had four or five, right? Because you can you can put four guys into your organization and, and get through that. So I think the short season uh, definitely changes things with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want to win. In, in this type of season, and you got to be able to get guys out. And then Sterling's throwing the ball good. You know, I've been pleasantly surprised. You know, he's an athletic guy. Uh, he's got a little funk to him. He's got a high arm. He throws at you. So he gives you a different look, and he gives us a different look in our bullpen. So he's throwing the ball well. Uh, but definitely the rules make it easier to, to have a Rule 5 guy on your, on your staff. Thank you. All right, two more questions, Don. We go to David Fernandez from Five Reasons. Hi, Don. Um, so I wanted to loop back to the, the hitters here for a sec. You mentioned Harold looks good. Um, how do you feel about the progression of some of your other young bats in the lineup, like Isan, Monte, and uh, Lewin Diaz? They look good. You know, Lewin continues to impress. Monte's swinging the bat good. Um, yeah, they, they've looked good. So we're, I'm pleasantly surprised with the offense. Honestly, in these games, they've been, they've been swinging the bat pretty good, uh, or these lives, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, but those guys you mentioned have all swung the bat pretty good. Thank you. All right, we've got a Joe before Craig yeah. concludes the session. Uh, yeah, Donnie, just a little to follow up on the previous question because I was going to ask about, obviously, when uh, Jesus Sanchez, uh, those guys getting this opportunity to come down and, and work out at Marlins Park, you get another long look at them. How much does that just help overall for them, whether they break camp with you or, or waiting in the wings? Uh, I think it's good. It's obviously good for them. 
uh, they're seeing same live pitching that everybody else is, right? And they're trying to get ready and you know for a season. And they wouldn't be in this camp if you didn't think at some point, uh, one way or the other, that they were going to help you or they have a chance to help you. So, I mean, and again, back to where, you know, when we left camp, one of the things that was exciting about camp is your number, not just the whole group of prospects you see, but a lot of them at that level, right, that you knew were knocking on the door. So they were at the surface already. And, and then the more we get to see them is, for me, the better. And the more they get exposed to having to deal with, uh, you know, big league pitching on a daily basis, you get to see them day in, day out, better for us. Kind of lets you know where they're at. You see some things. So it's, it's good for teaching. It's good for them learning. It's a good experience. Um, I think all, all of this is good for those guys. Thank you. All right, last question, Craig Mish. Hey, Donnie, sorry that I did have a question I missed before. Monte, back to Monte for a minute. Do you see him at this stage as more of your center fielder, right fielder, or both? Thank you. Yeah, Monte can play anywhere. That's the thing about him. And I think that's where we did a pretty nice job in development. Those the young outfielders end up playing everywhere, especially a guy that's capable of center. Right, they don't just put him in center and leave him there. Uh, he's played all over; he looks good everywhere. You know, there's really nowhere out there that you don't feel like Monte's the best right field, left field, center fielder. If he's on the field, he's going to be that guy defensively right now. Um, so he, he he's looked good. Again, I you know I've been a fan of Monte's for a couple of years. I know he has to continue to improve and keep with the ball and play, but. Love the energy that he plays with and the confidence and kind of he plays with that swag and, and that walk. So uh, he's a guy that you, I'm looking forward to, you know, cracking in here, breaking the door down and, and basically showing us what he can do. I think the fans of South Florida are going to love this guy.